The Lockwood shotgun is no longer the best weapon in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. So today I'm going to give you an updated list for the new top 10 best pack-a-punch weapons in the game. There are some weapons in here that haven't been at all meta before this most recent patch as well. And our last weapon especially is one that I don't think any of you guys are going to see coming. So to get started, number 11 on our list is the subscribe button. It's really powerful. You should go ahead and click it. At number 10, we have the Holger 26. And you need to make sure that you set this up in the right way because when we do so, we're going to get a super fast fire rate. Like it's crazy fast. And if you build the loadout with some intention here and you put a 100 round mag on, you can fire those 100 rounds really quickly. But then also, if you use the 100 round mag, you're going to end up with just under a thousand rounds total. And so if you use a mag of holding, you can spray and pray all of that stuff with crazy gun kick, admittedly. Like, this thing's pure comedy to use. But it's nuts. Like, this thing is just a total powerhouse. And the key to making all of that work is to put on the Season 2 Reloaded Battle Pass Conversion Kit called the Jack Burnout Kit. And that's unlocked by killing five special zombies with throwing knives. Number nine on the list is our Fallen King, the Lockwood. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this because we've covered it before. It's still powerful, right? Don't get me wrong. It's still decent. It's just no longer the best weapon in the game. And the reason for that is that previously, if you put on sludge rounds, you'd see 10 individual sludge rounds being fired out of the gun whenever you fired once you'd pack a punch, whereas now it's been reduced to only firing six sludge. So that's technically a 40% nerf per shot, which is pretty aggressive. And it will mean that in tier three now, sometimes you'll shoot enemies and you won't one shot them in the way that you could before. And that's pretty sad for a pump action shotgun. But hey, it is still strong. At number eight, we have the TAC Evolve. LMG. And this gun is just really damn fun to use. And there are three things about it that I think that you should pay attention to or tweak in the loadout to make the most of it. First of all, it's got 1500 rounds in reserve. So if you're looking for a good weapon to use in something like the Red Worm boss fight, I think this is a great contender. The second thing is that while 556 ammo is fine for farming zombies, it kind of struggles against special and boss zombies. And so I think it's a better idea to swap out to the 762 ammo. And that overall is going to really boost your damage output. And the third thing is that if you equip the 200 round mag, it's going to take away those 762 ammo bullets that we just put on. So I would say it's a better idea to limit your mag, keep it to 100 bullets, and then just make sure that you pack a punch the gun in game as fast as possible, because that will then double your mag to be 200 bullets as if you had the 200 round magazine on. And so you'll get the same effect there, but you'll also have the 7.62s making you even more strong. Our next gun is the RGL. It's made every list I've made about Modern Warfare 3 zombies so far, and it's not going anywhere because of its utility. This is not a damage weapon, it's a utility weapon. And it's especially nice because you only need one pap crystal to make it sort of max effective. And that means that it's a really useful weapon to switch to in games where you've run out of pap crystals in your acquisitions or your schematics. And then you can just switch to another regular bullet-based weapon in your next game after that. Speaking of bullet weapons, our next gun is actually two guns. It's the Renetti but akimbo? Now, I think burst weapons are very underrated in Modern Warfare 3 Zombies. I actually challenge you, how many times have you used a burst weapon in the game? Any burst enjoyers? Leave a comment down below letting me know. But I think they're pretty uncommon. Just take a look at the gameplay here. Like, each gun has 100 bullets per mag once it's upgraded, right? And since they're pistols, you've got crazy good mobility, and they reload super fast. So they're nimble, they're powerful, and if you're feeling frisky, you could use the conversion kit that's available for them to make the Renetti an automatic SMG instead of burst fire. But start with burst. You might actually find that you really love it. Now, our next weapon is the Sidewinder, which might surprise some of you because at base, the Sidewinder has a slow rate of fire and the biggest magazine is a 30 round drum and it, it feels like it's quite a limited weapon, right? wrong. Again, if we make sure that we set the loadout up correctly, we can take it from being a battle rifle into being an LMG. And once it's an LMG, it's going to have 100 rounds per mag when papped. And as you hold down the trigger, the fire rate is going to increase over time. And you might think, okay, well, that, that's nothing new, right? But what's new is the mag of holding. So this is now one of the best mag of holding weapons in the entire game, because you can just shoot super fast and for as long as your heart desires. And it's going to be crazy powerful when you're doing so. So for bosses, for example, like the Red Worm or other bosses that are going to stand still and just let you shoot them, this thing is insane. It's just kind of terrible if you need to run around and be very nimble, but we have the Renettis for that, right? Now, the key to getting this loadout specifically is to get the weapon to max level. Okay, that's your first step. 
And then you need to go over here in the menus and look for the conversion kit. And it's that kit that is going to turn it from BR to LMG. Next up is the Haytaker, which you might be a little surprised by because if we're saying the Lockwood's been knocked off its pedestal, surely we're leaving the shotgun meta now. But the Haytaker actually survived that little round of nerfs and it still shines amongst all of the other guns. The reason for this is that the sludge count of the Haytaker has not been reduced in the same way that the Lockwood's has. So whack your sludge on, make sure you've got a 20 round mag on it as well. And when you do this, you can basically just mow down entire hordes of zombies all at once, even if you're in tier three, for example. And if you recall, like with the Lockwood, you'd have had to stand there and pump through each individual enemy. Whereas with this, you can spray and pray, which is really nice. And it also means that this is perhaps a little easier to use against bosses. And just in general, it doesn't require the finesse and the precision that the Lockwood did previously. So for me, Haytaker's my favorite shotgun in the game right now. And I think it's one of the best weapons. And because of that, it's the gun that I chose to record my new Dark Ether Classified Schematics farming videos with. So if you want to see the best way to farm some of those new schematics from the new Dark Ether, I'll link that in the description and in the corner of the screen right now. Now, our next weapon is a real quick one. It's a fan favorite from previous seasons as well. It's the Wasp Akimbo. It's still super duper good. You can run the new Elder Sigil with ease with this thing. And part of why I love it so much is just that it's fun. Like who doesn't like Akimbo SMGs with a bunch of ammo, man? It's just a good time. So the Wasp Akimbo, definitely one to check out if you haven't already. Next up is another fan favorite. This is something that has come back plenty of times since its buff, at least, and it's the VR-11. Now, I didn't really want to include Wonder Weapons in the list, but it's just so incredible against the Red Worm and any special zombie. And now that you don't need to reload it when paired with the Mag of Holding, it's easily one of the top weapons in the game. Wonder Weapons are boring, though. We've seen them all before. Let's talk about something that you may not have seen before. Our second last weapon here. And again, the last one's going to be crazy. You're going to be surprised, I think. But the second last weapon here is actually a mod. I know that sounds weird. It's none other than the flamethrower underbarrel. And I've put it at number two because like right now it is just the strongest thing in the game, like hands down. But I think that it's going to get nerfed any day now. And it is also a little limited because you can only get ammo for it from ammo caches or max ammo drops. Like you can't get it from the little satchels on the floor. But even with that limitation, it's bonkers. You don't even need to upgrade this thing to one shot tier two zombies. And if you throw just one pap level on it, it'll take out tier two bounties. Crazy easy. And so you can imagine, right? Like if it does this much damage when it's just papped once, holy smokes, it's going to be insane when it's papped tier three gold wrench whole shebang. But like I said, there's a good chance that this gets patched any time now, right? So make the most of it while you can. This is a limited time fun machine. And that brings us to number one on our list, our final weapon. And I would just quickly ask if you've enjoyed the video, I'd really appreciate if you could drop a like on it. And with that like button clicked, we can move on to number one, the Sower Subverter. I know you're probably thinking, really? But trust me, throw a 50 round mag on it and bear witness to just how much damage this thing can output. It is fantastic. Don't just take my word for it though give it a try for yourself.